down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. All right, Savvy Investors, today is another treat. Every freaking episode is a treat, but I think this is, it is my first time to have a published author on the show, and uh, his name is Mike Odell. It's kind of crazy and weird how I even know this guy. I met Mike Odell at the park. Yes, and um, it was after church. I took my kids to, we had a picnic at the park, and I randomly run into this guy, and we started talking about real estate, and I was like, wow, this is random. Out of a million people in Oklahoma City, I bump into a guy at a park. His kids are playing with my kids, and we're talking about real estate, and it was like fast friends, and I saved his number in my phone. I'm like, I got to connect with this guy in the future, and it says Mike Odell, investor, park bench. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. And then from that a year ago or so is we've been kept in contact and uh, I'm excited. Mike just released a book on Amazon called Landlord Away Student Loan Debt, which is uh, just a great title. Um, I love being a landlord and so does Mike. And so we're just going to get to know you today and we have nothing scripted. So we have no clue of where this is going to go, but I think uh, I want to let my friends and friends and fly all over the world know about you. So, hello, Mike Odell. Well, hello, Stephen Van Kellenberg. Man, oh, you said my I name actually, right. Actually, well, heck yeah, man. I've been listening to the radio show ever since I knew about it. Um, we actually, the first time I saw you was at a real estate meeting about a month before uh, we were at the park. And uh, I saw you up on a panel. You were cracking me up. Um, you they put you next to this straight laced guy who has six months of income saved up and stuff, and you're just rolling your eyes, going whatever, man. And he was yeah. beating me up. And yeah, ch- yeah, everything I said, he challenged me on. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> and his name is Jim. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. And Jim's people, great. Jim's he's a great, great guy. But and now he, here I am up at the top of Van Kallenberg Towers, looking over the city here. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Empire two thousand awesome. sixteen. So, All right, so. Real estate, you've been in it for three years. Yeah. How'd you find real estate? You you went to school. You What's your day job? I'm a certified registered nurse anesthetist. So I'm a nurse that's been through anesthesia training, and it is expensive to become one of those people. Yeah, what was your student loans? Uh, they started out, after I finished school, about 180000 But the federal government sets your rate right around 8% these days. And the interest starts accruing the day you take the loan out so now i'm about 250 and getting deeper every month actually. so you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in loan with an eight percent interest yeah there's no pell grants not for what i do <laughs> no man uh, most of that most of the grants and all that free stuff is when you're undergrad and when you go to grad school uh you're kind of on your own okay so what made you become so you are a nurse but a, a nurse with a certificate so anesthesiology. Yeah, yeah. So I, I worked as a registered nurse for uh, 12 years or so before I went to anesthesia school. And it's a it's a hard job. I did critical care, adult critical care. Um, I've been trauma, ICU, burn units, open heart, heart transplant. And you name it, and I did it. I traveled the country doing it for years. And that's actually what kept me out of real estate because I moved every three months from basically from December of 1999 until I moved back home in 2012. And did your wife go with you each time? I met her in Seattle while I was on a job out there. And I actually stayed there on a three-month contract for about four years. I just kept re-upping, and I moved to a different hospital if I needed to, and we just hung out and stuff. And then we got married, and we both decided we wanted to get our master's degrees. What does Uh, she do? What's her day job? Now she's at home with the kids. Well, um, she, well, she wanted to get a master's. She got in her what? master's in library and information sciences, and she has her BA in English, which actually turns out really handy if you're just a guy who wants to write a book. That's cool. Because I gave my book to her, and she tore it to pieces. My seven year old was looking through it, and uh, he he leafed through it. It's about a hundred pages printed out after she'd edited it the first time, and he looked at me and said, "Daddy, you only got twelve pages right." <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's just because she was being yeah. nice. People don't know what it takes to write a book, but okay. So Seattle's a beautiful place. How would you convince her to come to the center of the universe in well, Oklahoma? Well, she uh, 
we, we had to find a grad school that would take both our programs. And it was hard to find one that had a nurse anesthesia program and one that had a library program together. True. We found one in Tennessee. Uh, and so we moved there. And, uh, you know, I, I was a zero down guy before I knew what zero down was. The first place I bought was here in Oklahoma City. And it's a two bed, one and a half bath condo off of the uh, off of Northwest Tenth and Rockwell area. Okay. And I bought it for twenty three five. My mom's friend is a realtor, and she talked me into the place. I was renting, you know, and uh, so I bought this house for twenty three five. The mortgage on it was less than two hundred a month because I got it on a thirty year note. And so, you know, I had a thousand square foot pad, way cheaper than any of my buddies, and it was mine. And awesome. it was going to be a great rental one of these days. And I think I brought a hundred bucks to closing. And so I thought that's how you buy a house. <laughs> so when we go to Tennessee, um, I told my wife, Let, let's buy a house when we get out here. And uh, she's like, oh, I don't know. She'd never done anything like that before. It's like, it's no big deal. You just pick a nice house. You pick something you like, you go sign some papers and it's yours. And that's what we did. <laughs> so I didn't even have a job yet. We, I was in between jobs. And uh, Was this a subprime loan? No, it was this a 30-year FHA, a 30 year, Fannie Mae loan? Nothing, nothing fancy, just a plain old loan through a broker. But it was 2007. When they would give you money for yeah, whatever. No, no doc loan. No yeah. job loan. No. Yeah, I wasn't even employed. I mean, I had a contract that was about to start, and I'd had a 10-year history with the company. But Well, yeah, that kept that helped you as a nurse, right? You were a registered nurse. Yeah, so, so I was marketable, and I had awesome credit, and so did she. Uh, so did I you buy went, a house there? Yeah, time? yeah, with nothing. I didn't put Again, a, another no money down, a yeah, very little money. Yeah, and uh, I still got that house, actually. Because awesome. we bought it in 07. So I can work you a sweet deal after this show's over. Hey, we could do a subject place too. On. <laughs> I'll take over that arm loan. No, no it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's property managed out there. It's it's a house that I don't talk about in the book or anything. It's just paying for itself and I'm waiting for the market to turn around out there. It just never, it hasn't gotten straight enough. Sure. I'm not going to sell a house and lose money. Sure. Especially on something. All right. So you live there. And then you, there. then you decided, then did that school work out? And then that you, school worked out. I had a job lined up. Um, and then in June, they called me and told me I didn't have a job in January and I needed to find someplace else to be. Wow. So that's six months. Yeah. For a job, it takes three or four months to get an anesthesia job. You've got to go through all these committees and stuff at the hospital. It's not a small thing. So we were looking at going back to Seattle or coming back here. And the thing is, a CRNA makes about the same amount of money in either location. So we could come here and kill it or we yeah. could go to Seattle and scrape by. And, and the cro- cost of living is way different, like 30, 40%, 30% oh, cheaper. Yeah. 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 Uh, cool. So, and I have family here. So we decided to come here. And so you applied at OU? Is that what you uh, work at? Sorry. Deaconess. Um, okay. Got a job at Deaconess, uh, worked there for a couple of years and then I moved over to OU. But another thing that kept us moving here was the debt. Um, you know, I thought, I thought it was going to be boats and hose, man, when I graduated, you know, because it's going to triple my RN salary. So I was like, I don't care how much debt I take on. I'm going to be rich. Yeah. But then I had a family and the kids are staying at home and I was in this tax bracket. I didn't know sure what it was like and you get taxed on everything. Well, you know, you work for free for five months. Did you know that? Like logically. Oh, yeah. When you run, if you run the numbers, like for a whole year, 40% taxes, 40% of the year, you work until May for free. Yeah. I mean, if you're a W-2 employee. Yeah. That's why I definitely encourage people to be, you know, self-employed of sorts. So anyway, so you got into this, then the bills started coming in. How did you, what was the, uh, the, the paradigm shift that made you want to get into real estate? I read a little of your book. I'm, most of it, I skinned it just, just to get here today. Right. And, and I appreciate you, that. Thank yeah, you. of course. And I think everybody should get every book that's that's encouraging. And his book is encouraging. His he gives a whole technique where to get a loan, how to get a loan. He 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 spells it out completely how to do it. And I, I like it. And it's quick and concise. But um, what turned you on? What was that paradigm shift? It's like okay, you're making a hundred something thousand. I don't care what you're making at your job. I'm just assuming is it you know close to that? I hope. And you got a family. And it's not paying the debt. Is that, is that the, is that, was that, it was going to kill us. The, the, when they gave me my bills, it was going to be $2,500 a month just for your loans for 10 years. So that, which which comes out to 250,000 roughly. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this in your mind, you have this massive debt of $2,500 and you're like, how am I going to pay it? Yeah, I can. I don't, I didn't want to be earning the same amount because after taxes, if you took my student loan payments out, I'm making the same I was as an RN and I went through anesthesia school. You know, I went through, I went through a lot to get where I am. No, you said, did they take those payments out before you even got paid or you got no, paid no, and then you, you paid pay them? them. You gotta, so it's after tax money. Yeah. After taxes with the federal government who can come after you 
no matter what. You, well, can, you, you can't, can't even declare ba- bankruptcy. Yeah, you can't. From you it. can't run away from student loan. No. Okay, so that was a motivator. I guess a stressor Huge. if you watch well, Criminal Minds. It found. <laughs> a, it, it was my excuse more than anything. I wanted to be a landlord ever since I read my first book. Ever since that real estate agent got me to buy that first condo, I knew that was going to be a rental, and I wanted to do it. I just couldn't do it because I kept moving every three months. You can't. It's just. I know people who've done it actually. And, but they've done it, you know, through a broker and had all this stuff kind of set up remotely. And I just didn't want to do that. So I just put it on the back burner and then I got in one spot and then I've got this perfect excuse. Hey, we need money to pay these loans back. I can take that condo and make it a rental and we'll, we'll get 300 of that money. And then I found ways to get the loan payments lower uh, through federal programs, just following the rules that they set forth. If you read the fine print and there's a lot about that in my book about how to work our loans, cool. work the system. So I was like, I just want to do this big time. And my wife was like, you need to network. You need to find people. So I found out about Rhea through a carpet store connection Cool. Uh, while I was working on that condo. And I went to that meeting and it changed my life. Well, first uh, like-minded people, right? Yeah. People that know you can pull this stuff off. And, and, um, and you kind of already had a little experience going in. You had your first rental. You bought the house in Tennessee. And then, so did you decide to just to ramp it up? Yeah, I I wanted I wanted to be able to cover those debts completely as soon as possible. Yeah, so, um, I so you went to the RIA. Went to the RIA. What was the What was your next step after that? Did you try to buy another oh property? Did you line out banking? I went kind of crazy. I started buying all those books everybody was talking about. I read Nothing Down for the 2000s by Robert Allen. I couldn't put it down Mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't, you know, I didn't have any money. We'd gone through 150,000 of my retirement. I cashed out my 401k. We had, anesthesia school was 28 months of 70 hours a week work for me. And you you had to live off of something. I had to live off my debt. So, but the cool thing is I zeroed down to master's degree. Hmm. I zeroed down two years worth of my living. And Are you debt free now? Out of oh your... gosh, no. I'm in okay. more debt than ever, but not not debt like on the asset side. On the are you still own the student loan debt? Oh yeah, it goes. I actually go in the hole another six hundred bucks every month on my student loans, and I've got no reason to pay them off early. Um, of course not. But I mean, I don't like to pay off debt early unnecessarily. But the question is, so your goal right now is still to find more rental property to compensate that six hundred dollar alligator, right? Is that your goal right now? Is to buy more rental property? Can you keep a secret? I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're on the radio. Homie. My goal, my goal actually, man, writing this book started to pot something serious for me. Uh, I, <laughs> I want to be a multimillionaire. Well, you should. I always, I always wanted to, I've got the connections now. Um, I've, I'm in the RIA group. I've got bankers I can call on. Um, and, uh, I just, I want to do this. Real uh, estate I've, investing. Yeah. I've, So you're telling me that you have $250,000 in debt from your job and now you want to kind of walk away from that. If, if in the dream world, if this was a perfect scenario, you would go all in in real estate eight years from now, I get to walk away from it one way or the other. Why is it? Oh, because of the loans, because of the the public service loan forgiveness plan. I work at a state hospital. I'm paid by the state. And if I put in 10 years of minimum payments on my loans, the entire remaining balance, which goes up 600 bucks a month, every month, is wiped away tax free, courtesy of Uncle Sam. How cool is that? You're savvy, bro. You read the doc. You know, I love those forgiveness loans uh, on on property. They even have them on property. Did you know that? In certain in certain areas, like if you're a homeowner and you qualify at a certain income bracket, mm-hmm. I've seen this go down where uh, a couple borrowed thirty thousand dollars from the city and it was unforgiven. Like, I mean, forgivable, whatever. They didn't have to pay it back. The government, fabulous. Yeah, cool. That's is that in your book as well. That's oh, yeah. Little, that's oh, there's, there's hyperlinks to all that stuff in my book. Chapter two, awesome. student loan strategies. All right. So now you're kind of twisted. You wrote this book, kind of excited, like to help people out, but you're still in debt and you're still trying to make it happen. So yeah. what are you going to go from here? What's your what's your next three years from here or next year, 2016? What, what are, What's your plans? I originally promised my wife I wasn't going to buy any more houses. <laughs> I love that conversation and- I have. <laughs> I have the same one. Are you going to buy another one? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Until they tell me no, <laughs> until the banks say, burr, burr, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. I mean, I buy them pennies on the dollar. Why wouldn't you? But that's just, that's another episode. But 
So you had to, okay, yeah, how'd you get your wife on board? Ten, you know, Seattle, Tennessee, the, yeah, Oklahoma no. City. How, how many kids do you have? Three. Three children. So she's got a full-time job, no money coming in on her side. So you're the breadwinner. No. Yeah. And so how many units do you have now? I got seven houses. Seven houses, and you're still, in, and it's not even covering your your student loan debt. No, no, it's covering it. It's just those minimum payments that they have set as an income-based repayment plan. Okay, gotcha. So my my payment on my student loans is $600 a month less than the interest based on my income, which is terribly um, is it compound? impaired. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it basically matter. goes back on the back end. I know, because in 10 years, but so you got to be a slave, though. For another eight more years at this job, what if what if something goes down? Like they change your your department? It could happen. It could happen. Um, the Congress could wipe out PSLF if they want to. But I'm still on a 20 year repayment plan, no matter what, which it gets wiped out after 20 years. Now, did you know this PSLF? going into going into college that you were no. going to? You didn't know, and so uh, you know, society says go to school, get a good degree, go to debt. I was in school student debt and you know but i wasn't savvy like you oh i'm gonna have real estate i just wanted to be rich <laughs> that was my one of my basic goals wow so okay so you got a you got an eight-year plan rolling i if i have to yeah. and then so it, does it penalize you i mean are you declaring this on i mean obviously you're declaring on your taxes but if you say you bought 10 more houses would that affect your loan payment plan because it's affected by what your income is not with my accountant or unless you keep it separate, like an LLC and well, you know, I've ownership. Well, I've got an LLC, but my losses um, actually reduce my income every year. So they make my payments go down because sure. the payments are based off your income. So I'm actually, I'm claiming a lot of dependents, uh, whereas my coworkers are claiming they, single and they can't. have an extra taken out of their checks to make their income well, tax every year. Well, that's the beauty of, is it a repair or a capital improvement? You know, when you, yeah, when, I mean, yeah. that's the beauty of real estate and they try to cl- cramp down on it this year about, you can only do so much. You got to classify it a certain way. But anyway, that's another subject. So keep, continue on your, your plan. So how, how'd you convince your wife? You know, she's like, are you going to buy another house? I mean, seven houses is a pretty l- a large number for an average person in society, especially someone with that kind of debt. It's overwhelming. Have you calculated 250,000 plus your real estate portfolio debt? Is it 500,000? Half well, a million dollars in debt, my, million my, million dollars. <laughs> I'm about eight hundred and fifty in debt. Like mentally, like I know people it always ask me. Bother me. I know people ask me uh, how much you're. In, I, I'm I'm close to three million in debt, but how many? It's how many paying ha- for itself, so right. I could care less. I mean, it's, what's the worst thing that could happen? I lose it all. Okay, yeah, that's the banks anyway. How I look at it, when people, I work for the bank. Oh, you own these houses? No, not really. I'm just moving money from from you, the tenant to the bank yeah and i get a little percentage in just there a, it's, it's pathetic how and the cool thing is it's all protected by uh insurance and yeah. bankers have insurance on me and i have insurance on the asset it's not like the stock market we can throw money in there and hoping and praying that like the oil yeah it's gonna go up i know i watch drive by my neighborhood and know that it's increasing all right what type of houses do you buy uh just like you i'm on the east side of oklahoma city right on and um the most recent one I bought was in June. It was a four bed, two bath, about thirteen hundred square foot house, and uh, I got it got it through just a uh, realtor, which is what I recommend in my book because my book is for people who don't have time. Who, yeah, who don't have. Yeah, um, I got that vibe. They haven't there. hadn't done this before. You know, yeah. I left as much jargon out of it as I could because I want to tell regular people who are just like, you know, um, this real estate seems like a great idea. I'd like to be a landlord, but I've got all this debt and I got to pay that down first. Or I'm scared that I can't do it. Yeah. And it is scary. Sure. Um, anyway, I bought the house for 28 grand, put 5,000 into it, mainly carpet and paint, cool. um, threw some siding on it. Cause I was doing it section eight and it's now rated in section eight for eight fifty a month. Nice. So I make 10,200 a year guaranteed from the government on a house that I borrowed money and put 33,000 into. And did you acquire that asset with no money down? Well, yeah, I used a line of credit from another house I bought. Cool. So you um, leverage that to get that. Yeah. And uh, and then I take the money I get from the government for the housing, and I pay the government back on my student loans. Right. And Circle. I'm just in the middle. <laughs> awesome. And so uh, do you like Section 8? Are you, How many units? You have seven. Is that counting the one in Tennessee? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you got like six local rentals? Six local rentals. Four of them are on Section 8. Okay. And do you, you know that there's two offices? Are you have the 63rd office and the 4th Street office? Are you mixed or all at one office? I'm mixed 
Okay. I like the fourth street office. Sure, everyone does. Yeah. And you know, they changed it that the inspections are every two years now. I know. That's 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 freaking nice. I know. I actually just, I actually changed. I used to be anti section eight and I, for years I had like 20 something at one time and now I'm down to like four, but actually we are rehabbing a lot of properties just to go section eight because of that reason is because we don't have to every year send someone over there to do some sort of a fake inspection that, you know, they find, you know, a light switch out or a cover is broken and, you know, we got to wait another week to get paid. It's frustrating. What's your, are you managing them all? Yeah. How are you scheduling the lease signing? You just take off of work that day? I get off work at three or I've got a lot of time off with my job. So you can uh, so orchestrate I can that it work. Um, it's still a hobby landlord thing. And you know, that's the thing. I know that if I'm going to do this for real, I'm going to have to do something else to, to get it ramped sure. up. But I think I can, I can, I don't know if I can be patient enough. I can just slowly scale it up over the next few years and then retire at 50 and you know, be a landlord. Pe- people like, man, oh, it, it just blew up for me. Well, no, it took, a lot of people didn't know that it took me 10 years part time just to acquire X amount. And then, then when I finally went full time, which was after I had to make enough income to pay for my part time, my regular job to get to where I am. So just, I think you're on the right. The great thing I love about real estate is like 15 years of debt free. If you have those type of loans, I mean, you have a couple mixed 30 year. Um, what kind of money do you borrow now? I've just been doing credit lines. So uh, you set up a credit, like a line of credit at a bank mm-hmm. and you leverage it on the asset that you have. Yeah. Is, is that asset debt free? Yeah. Until I get a line of credit on it. And then I've just been kind of, okay. Le- so you paid that house off somehow and then you went back and uh, no, well, um, I borrowed money to start off with from family. Okay. So and, like a private money. Yeah. And in the paperwork, we drew it up that they had no interest in the real estate. Sure. That it was just a business loan. So the bank thinks that doesn't have a loan per se. Yeah. Or I got They're just not one. on the title or anything. So sure. Then, it's free and clear. So they can, they can encumber it and they can put a lien on it yeah. or a mortgage, not a lien necessarily. Yeah. Okay. So then I just started leapfrogging it like that. I bought a couple houses and then took them to the bank, a banker that you introduced me to. Uh, and thank you for that as well. Which bank do you use now? I'm now at Oklahoma State Bank and Bank First. Cool. Um, and I got a Quell Creek account, but I haven't done any real estate through them. The Oklahoma State Bank. I haven't borrowed there. I know you went with Becky, right? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Uh, what's their terms? What are they offering now? And what was that process like? Was it easy, hard, anything? It was pretty easy. Um, I'm on a – they did a – a 15 year note for me on a few properties. Um, we cleared out a credit line, you know, juggling stuff around like always. And I want to say is that four and a half percent. Wow. On a 15 year on a 15 year with a five year balloon. So it's just a, a set payment every month and then it'll balloon at five years. I, I'm not going to be able to tackle that debt cause I'm busy getting out of debt to my family first. Sure. And so. it may not be advantageous for you to do that. Yeah. Was, okay. And was this a normal appraisal? And then yeah. just loan docs. What was the origination fee? I don't like one percent, maybe. I think so. Okay, there's a couple grand that we rolled in. So now that. you just, you, in your mind, I'm just assuming I don't want to put words in your mouth. You're trying to ramp this up somehow. I'd like to. Have you th- have you ever considered having a pro- a property manager, or do you manage all these yourself, or? I manage them myself. I have a very good resource. My mother is a commercial property manager. And has <laughs> that been is for a years. really good resource. So <laughs> if I need a plumber or something and mine's busy, I just, uh, hey, ma'am, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you help me? Yeah. Oh, right on. So she manages a couple of uh, strip mall type places and um, has been doing it forever. And she's oh. also a landlord. All right. So we got a couple more minutes, about five more minutes left. Let's talk about the book. Like, how. What motivated you to write a book? Like, was it a long-term dream? What is it like one day? Hey, I'm going to write a book. And was someone talking to you at at your job? And like, how are you so happy all the time? And, uh, it's the leaky anesthesia machine. Yeah. You're getting high at the the deal. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I, I know your book is a smaller book, which is still doesn't matter, but writing a book, figuring it out, getting it on there, getting it edited. What, what gave you that desire? What was the idea? I, I got, uh, you're going to get mad at me. Um, I, uh, I got this feeling in October that I needed to write a book. So I started, um, I, I decided I wanted to write a children's book. I'm 
artistic. I can draw, I can paint, whatever. And I read books to my kids every night. And so I started trying to write a children's book and it just wasn't working. I, I couldn't make the plot work. I could, it just, it was sucking. So I was like, oh man. So I, I read a book on writing children's books. And it says, if you're going to write a good children's book, you need to take classes. You need to network. You need to practice. And it was all this stuff that you got to do with real estate to get it right. And I knew that. I was like, you know, to be a good landlord, you can't just go, I'm going to buy a house and yeah, you gotta rent it out. you got to know. Network. you got to know what's happening. Sure. Um, Is that why you always text me all the time? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, hey, Steven. Did you, you have another friend out there in real estate? Because it didn't seem like it. <laughs> it was like, hey, how are you? Now, what banker do you use? What, what are you, all right. What are you wearing? <laughs> it's right like, <laughs> all right, buddy. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> you, got, you try to write a children's book. And it wasn't working. So then I was like, well. All the time in the OR, I'm talking about what I'm doing. It's just interesting to people. I'm a landlord. I got the landlord stories. And you got great stories, probably. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. on the east side. Pretty. Oh, yeah. It's adventurous. <laughs> yes. And, uh, well said. So I I talk to these other people. I'm like, oh, I've never made a student loan payment. They're like, how do you do that? You know? Um, well, I'm a landlord. I did that. So I, I thought, well, this actually could be a really good subject for a book. So I Googled it. I couldn't find anything like it. Cool. And it may be kind of a niche market, but it's not really. There's 14.1 million people every year that graduate in student loan debt. If if one percent of those people buy my book, and then do it, and buy one, how about one unit? I mean, my goal is just to get you to to be self sufficient, folks, and get off the system. Yeah. If you can just buy one rent house, I look at it like you said earlier. You're getting three hundred dollars off that one unit. Yeah. You got twenty eight. You bought it. You got. Three thousand, five thousand. You got thirty three thousand in it. Your payments two hundred dollars. Tax and insurance is three hundred. Your cash flowing major. I mean, oh yeah. If you bought ten of those, that'd be three thousand dollars a month. I mean, yeah. that would cover your debt. Yeah. I mean, you. Could, I could live off of that. Not now. Not with three children. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. it's that simple. You just you don't need this many. So yeah, I think your 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 charge towards and you know, have you seen the movie The Big Short? Yet, it's not a, yet. You got to go see it. Much. But you know, it's a debacle what we're having. You know, we got this criminal subprime thing. We got the tax, um, not tax, but the uh, stock market. But then the student loan is this hidden giant that everyone is in debt. It's going to collapse. Trillions of dollars. Yeah. Trillions of dollars. And so I think you have a great voice out there that you know encourages to pique people's interest. I think the book is a great primer if you're interested in real estate at all and you got a nine to five it doesn't have to be in the medical field you need to pick up michael dale's book because it's just like this guy did it and he did it casually he wasn't even driven he someone just said hey you know i wanted to get out of my environment and you had a great invite you had a great you're, you're the top of the echelon as a nurse you're better than a regular nurse per se right and, anesthesia, and, and yeah, anesthesia docs are rolling okay but the thing is I think that people just need to know. They just don't know. Rich Dad Poor Dad don't know about finances. That you are, there is no classification to be rich. You can be rich if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I, I like that concept. So, so you're talking to your friends at at the hospital, and you're like, "Man, I'm going to write a book on it." So then you just sat down one day and started clicking and typing. I, and the iPhone is a magical device, Stephen. I just sat down with my iPhone and I started typing it. I took. Type thirty thousand words with my right thumb. Cool. During my spare time, I like that. Um, you know, and I really uh, love the artwork. How'd you come up with that too? It's kind of classy, but not. You know, it's not generic. It's professional. Usually, people that throw out an ebook, it's ghetto. And yeah. I, and I looked at your art. I liked the little tag on there, little price tag. I mean, well, thank you. I thought I thought it was well done. It was my idea, but I knew I couldn't carry it off that well, so I paid a graphic design artist seventy five bucks to do that book cover, and then it really looks sharp. It does. So I'm I'm stoked about that. Man, I'm excited for you. All right. So how can folks out there get a buy, buy a copy? How, what's spell your name? The 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 whole deal. Landlord away your student loan debt by Michael Odell O apostrophe D E L L. If you just type my name into Amazon, I'm the first thing that pops up. Right on. And I uh, got oh, almost thirty five star reviews, and most of them. Or a good number of them are people who don't even know me. Yeah, that's uh, so cool. I, I mean, I reaching people. That's so I, I, cool. Yeah, I bought it. Um, I only have 10 reviews on mine, so that's really good. And, you know, I've been around for a little bit longer. But when I bought it, I only had six reviews. I'm like, dang, is he paying? Hey, man, I'm one of yours. Because okay. I, I bought your book. I read it, and I okay. definitely reviewed okay, it. Okay, right on. You got five stars. Yours is way better than mine, by the way. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> There's no difference. I think you speak to a different clientele. You know, I, I it's a great story. Folks, it's easy read. I think it took me – I read it in Dallas, and I think it took me less than an hour – 
and I kind of just skimmed through it, but I some of the stuff was legit. I, I noticed that you referenced Russell over at Carpet Depot. You <laughs> ref, referenced someone else. I thought that was really cool as well. Is there an email that you can shout out to give to people that maybe they can get some kind of information back and forth or encouragement? Is there an email you want well, to throw Well, sure, out? sure. You can use my personal email. Okay. It's an old one because it's back from when I was a nurse. It's M O D E L L R N at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, well, that's it. That's our episode today. It's been a, a pleasure to get to know you a little bit more, Mike, and I, I hope great things for you. Continue the, the fight to educate uh, your coworkers to get out of the, the rat race. Man, it's just so cool to touch people, uh, to see them get that glimmer in their eyes that I had because when you really when you start getting into this, it is, it is a high that has not had an equal with me. Awesome. Um, and I've been around for a while. All right. So, well, we'll cool. have you back Thank on the you. show. Appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank what, you. And whatever you do, folks, buy assets. Investor Weekend is not far off with over 10 information sessions to increase your portfolio. Log on to www.investorweekend.com. Whether you are a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend with over 10 informational sessions that are bound to enlarge your real estate investments. You will hear from the best national and local real estate investors that will share practical and relevant experiences with you, the investor. There will be several networking sessions to connect with other like-minded people for potential funding, partnerships, and yes, hot deals. Go to www.investorweekend.com. Did you know we meet once a month for the Landlord Lunch Meeting? The third Wednesday of every month, go to LandlordLunch.com. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 